I am happy not to be a web developer anymore. This is called pivoting, people. Pivoting. I wrote my first single-page web app in JavaScript in 2005, right after learning about XML HTTP request and before any serious frameworks existed. Nice. I did a little bit of HTML. I did a website about Rodney Mullen in 2005 for my senior capstone project. I don't know if you know about Rodney Mullen, but he is pretty, he is pretty slick. He is pretty slick on the board, okay? He is pretty slick on the board. I enjoyed his style. He literally is the GOAT. Like, unironically, people say that phrase all the time. He's actually, like, the guy. Besides for that one boy named Ollie, who was the first person to Ollie, who I think was named after Ollie. Great kid. Ignited the world. All right, so let's keep on going. I left professional web development behind in around 2009. Really? That's when things started to get less shitty. Like, jQuery was on the horizon. I started in 1997 with web objects and spent the final decade of my career doing mobile. Okay, okay. I, your timeline's confusing in my head. I'm a little bit confused by this timeline, but let's keep on going. Let's keep on going. I looked at the world of web development today, and it's mind-boggling how insane it is. You know, if you took a break from web development and came back, I could... I could imagine a 10-year break before jQuery came onto the scene. That'd be quite the change. Like, you're over there using, like, Java beans or whatever it is you're using, and you come back and you're like, what the hell has, what the hell has happened here? <laughs> it's like coming home and you left your kids at home and there's just paint on the ground. And you're like, how did you get paint? How did you open it? And then why did you put it on the ground? I have several questions. None of this should have been possible. There's so many web frameworks with new ones appearing every day. Building a web application as opposed to a website like my art website, which is statically generated, has only a little JavaScript, often requires a myriad of tools and technologies, which often change at high frequencies and feature endless amounts of other technologies you usually don't even know are there. Ooh, look, the package directory has 2,000 items. <laughs> Okay, hey, don't make fun of node modules. That's kind of rude. N node modules has been working on how many packages they bring down, okay? You know, New Year's resolution 2024 is just to slim up a little bit, okay? We don't need to do this. Don't package shame. JavaScript is a terrible language that was never designed for any of this, yet oddly it became popular because it was always there. It's amazing how much innovation has gone into building out today's web development universe despite the somewhat shaky foundation it is built upon. It is impressive. I actually agree with this statement. Well done, JavaScript. Uh, well done, you did that. In my first mobile job at an online travel company, now sadly just a brand, the web team evaluated web frameworks for a new mobile web app, Hotel Flight Car Booking. In the end, they picked what they thought would work best. A year later, the open source framework was almost abandoned. Thankfully, it didn't matter since our brand had been sold and all technology in the entire company were gone. <laughs> I just want you to think about that for a second. Imagine building a company, but your company didn't sell in one year, and the thing you based your entire company on, gone. It's now your problem. It's yours now. This is you. You get, to, you get it, or you got to migrate it. Hey, can you hold this bag for me for a quick second? Today, I can't even imagine how many choices there are to pick from, with new ones always appearing. Some of them are entire ecosystems, and often you choose one, and then change becomes impossible. The company investment is too significant. Right now, there's thousands of class components that I see every day in the work that I'm at. I see so many, like even being able to change some of the foundational systems away from class components into functional components is impossible. It's just simply impossible at certain scale. We'll just always have legacy React. That means we're stuck on what, React 16 or 17 or something like that? Whatever was the last supporting one. As a programmer, you become attached to one and switching can become difficult as employers often want people with experience in their chosen ecosystem. Yet specializing in one could put you in a difficult spot in your career if it becomes obsolete or ever abandoned. Remember how I always make fun of React Andes? This is actually a really good thing just to just hold in your head. No matter how much you love a framework, don't be afraid to just, it's okay. It's okay not to make it your only trick. All things end, don't they? Yes, well, most things end. A lot of computer science foundation material won't end for an exceptionally long period of time. They have a longer, they have, the longevity is, is there enough for you to be able to last until we have a fundamental change in computing to the point where like jobs don't exist. When that future happens, I'm not a, do, I'm not a doomer, but I'm also not a gloomer. Like I don't think it's gonna happen in five years, right? I don't know when it's gonna happen 
At some point, I'm sure there'll be a change that's massively different that I cannot predict or foresee, but that change isn't today or in five years. I remember the first two single page apps I built. It was fun, and I needed very little to build them beyond a text editor and browser. Getting data did involve a little marshalling framework and some Java code. The architecture board I was a part of complained that I had bought some unimproved technology until I spent a lot of time showing them that it was just a browser and JavaScript. My customers, internal only app, liked that they could search for information quickly as if it was a desktop app instead of consistently reloading the page. These were not huge applications like Gmail, of course. So I do, I don't like this argument, by the way, which is, you know, when I first built an application, well, you know, a lot of things have changed since 2005. The internet just got much better. The amount you could shove through the pipe has increased a thousandfold. The amount of memory, the amount of speeds you get out of a computer has gotten way, way better. And also just the baseline appetite for an application has gr greatly changed. And so this idea that, well, when I first built it, you just needed a simple text editor. True, sure. But you know what? In 2008, 2007, 2006, you know what was really great? NetBeans and autocomplete with Java. Like it was great. It made it so that your first experience as a new person was actually really, really easy to kind of get started. So just because it did work doesn't mean it should keep on working a specific way. Today, unless you're a tiny team building small apps, you probably invest in picking an ecosystem like React, Angular, or Vue, or combining smaller frameworks with other tools to roll your own environment. You must worry about CSS frameworks, asset packer slash assemblers, and many other open source frameworks and utilities, which are built on layers of yet more open source items. Now, you must keep everything updated and avoid incompatibilities and security holes. What a pain in the ass all of this has to be. Of course, it's job security. You know, I don't actually think it's job security. Like, I've never also liked this as an argument in general. I do not think people choose React for job security. I don't think people are like, I'm going to make the most convoluted application, but it's going to start off incredible and simple, and I'll be able to dupe all of them. I'm going to dupe all of those sons of bitches. I'm going to get... Like, I don't think anyone does that, right? I don't... I just... I just don't think people do that. I think a lot of people just program what they're familiar. They just... That's it. I'm familiar with this. Therefore, that's what I use. It's something like this in my company when I show up with HTMX. Yeah, HTMX is like the world's simplest library. It's like, no, actually, I want the opposite of me job security. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to give it away to anybody that knows what an HTTP request is. If you know what that is, great, you can help out. Programming when I started in the early 80s was much more straightforward as you needed to know the programming language, the operating system, and what you were asked to build. Everything else you had to invent yourself. I remember what a big deal it was for Trapeze, a spreadsheet-like application we shipped in January 1987. When and we got a copy of Lex and Yak from a friend who had access to Unix to make our formula parser with. Today, almost everything you need is available somewhere in open source form, yet it became unsupported, suffer from bugs you might not know about, and became incompatible with another open source item you need. Real talk, were any of these issues not present also back in the day? Did not things become unsupported? Like what about all the people that bought Borland? The final a large project I shipped at my last job had no open source elements. It was all pure Swift. Uh, our legal department wa was hard to please and it was easier to build everything ourselves than to deal with them. I don't know if that's like, I'm not sure if that's like a, a W because I, I also don't want to, I don't want to build an HTTP framework. I just don't like, I don't need, what, do, do you want to build yet another route handler? I don't. Yes, I want. Okay. You do. Okay. Uh, some of you don't. Okay. Some of you do. It sounds like, okay, my bad. Hey, if you want to build one just to build one, I actually think it's pretty, I think it's actually a pretty good exercise. It's actually a really incredible exercise. I might have to write that down. It's not that you can't build complex things and maintain them with today's web framework ecosystem. Still, it can't be much fun. And I wonder how the applications will evolve given their ecosystems are constantly changing. Well, don't you already know? Can't you already see? There is no framework that says this is what we are and we're not changing. There's always a look to somehow make it better. There's always an ever non-stopping march towards progress. Whether or not progress is or is not, Good. It's just it, Svelte 5 is is an example. Svelte 5 did change things. Even Svelte changed. Yeah, Svelte has changed quite a bit. And Svelte is probably one of the least changing of all the frameworks. Have you ever heard about Rails? No. Rail me, daddy. Tell me about it. Yeah, that sucks. I hate that when bosses require specific projects. That's crazy. People still use and support COBOL programs almost as old as I am. So anything is possible. I wonder if AI will eventually be able to deal with the constant churn in infinite layers of your web environment or will give up and do humanity in. Do humanity so good? Programming has always changed and change is hard to adapt to. I've always specialized in building new things instead of maintaining old ones. I mean, that's really the... 
That is, I mean, real talk, that's the best specialization one can get. You know, I always just write the 80%. Like, that's my goal, personally. I'm always looking to try to write the 80%, not trying to maintain the 20. Often, in companies or industries where new markets or technologies require new applications, I cannot remember ever dealing with so many new technologies that are constant evolving and continuously having to imagine where they will be next year, much less the next decade. Okay, let's remove C programming li language and, and lisp. Like, what hasn't changed greatly in a decade? Think about... 10 years ago, there was no NeoVim. Yeah, well, I mean, I, C changed in what, 2011? It got that new thre it got that new threads model. PHP doesn't change much. What are you talking about? PHP changes incredible amount in ten years. I haven't seen C twenty three. C twenty three is releasing this year. That's actually pretty cool. I'd like to actually look at the list of changes. C is a beautiful language because it doesn't require much effort to understand what's available. Yeah, I know. So, PHP has traits, dog. Java has changed quite. Java is in is incredibly different. Mount stupid. Mount stupid's happening. HTML hasn't changed much. What are you? <laughs> What do you mean HTML hasn't changed a lot? Goodness gracious! Have any of you- <laughs> Stop saying phrases! Everybody, stop talking! Dead languages assembly hasn't changed! Get the hell out of here! Assembly has changed potentially the most. I hate everybody. Security is a huge issue today, which was not the case in the first half of my career. Someone has to worry about all this and make choices that will not cause issues, perhaps years later. How long will the application you write today have to live with the same source code using the framework you picked initially? I would just assume until the end of time. Like, unless if you build a program that you know is small and like a debug only kind of program, you should just plan on things living for a long, long time. Actually, Actually, vanilla JS hasn't changed much. You're right. Ten years ago, you know what you couldn't do? You couldn't do uh, includes. Includes wasn't a thing. Uh, you could not do uh, map. Hell, you couldn't do flat map. Uh, let's see. What else was there? Ten years ago, node was just coming out. Uh, you could not do... There was no const. This didn't exist. Pretty much array.at. Pretty much an incredible amount of array functions. There was... No array functions, no classes, no spreads, no arrow functions. It was just callbacks, async await, template strings, named template strings. JavaScript has changed. A higher order functions always exist in JavaScript. Yeah, Elvis operator, null uh, coalescing operator. I am not going to answer this question. X hasn't changed that much. Everything has changed. Wasm didn't even exist. <laughs> Actually, squeal is probably the best. Squeal is probably your best. My squeal. Actually, what am I saying? My squeal now allows for JavaScript functions. You know what? My squeal even has changed greatly, okay? My squeal has JavaScript functions today, okay? JavaScript stored procedures. It's your squeal. It's not my squeal anymore, okay? That's yours. The application I started in 1988, Delta Graph, survived on the same source code for 30 years. My team only worked on it for five years before the pandemic killed the last company that sold it. Ultimately, it no longer ran on Mac OS as the quarter century old C source code could not be updated to 64-bit. I had no idea in 1988 that the decisions I made back then would impact someone three decades later. The main web application from my last employer was an amalgamation of way too many technologies that that made little sense when I first saw it. I wonder if many web apps these days will become piles of primordial ooze over time. People hate rewriting large things, but the cost of supporting the unsupportable eventually becomes too high. Another blog post to be coming soon. With the web applications built on such massive piles of constantly changing technologies, I wonder if the pile will eventually collapse. This is actually a really good point that I do love. One thing I don't love is the fact that he first cited something in 1988. The change from 1988 till today, all those old applications pretty much stayed because it's people stuck on these old versions, right? You couldn't even update the 64 bit. Like imagine that. Okay. That's a, that's a silly way to point to things that like are good. But the thing that I see right here is this, right? This sentence is super, super compelling to kind of read and think about, which is that a lot of people write an initial application, assuming you can rewrite it. But the problem is, is that after a year, two years, rewriting becomes impossible. You just can't rewrite it without significant downturn so you actually become stuck with all of your decisions. Like I get moving fast and just choosing whatever tech is hot is great and all, but you're stuck with the bag and that everyone who thinks you can just rewrite it have not worked long enough on a product to understand rewrites are infrequent and every single time I've seen someone do a rewrite, someone has quit or been fired that's higher up in the company due to it. Maybe AI will eventually take this burden away and allow programmers an easier time to focus on only essential tasks. I am still skeptical it may happen eventually, but I don't see an AI being able to build a complex application by itself anytime soon. Programming to make art is almost like returning to the 80s for me. I don't 
use many open source packages beyond Swift math libraries, and most of the code I write is not something you would find anywhere. <laughs> Man, sniffing his own farts on that sentence. One time I was in math class, calculus three, and this guy raises his hand and asks a question. And what comes out of his mouth ends up being one of the most unique sentences I've ever personally heard in my lifetime. I couldn't understand it. I couldn't understand a single sentence. And I looked towards my teacher. And my teacher also couldn't understand the sentence. And when my teacher went, what? The kid's response was, I have a mind like an artist. This sentence is a mind of an artist. Most of my code you wouldn't find anywhere anyways. Besides the occasional Xcode and Swift version releases, I am mostly insulated from massive changes. The most irritating thing is adding features on my site generator and website where I get a little indication of complexity in keeping things updated. But it's not my everyday job. I don't envy today's web developers the task of keeping up with constant change and evolution, security, and the occasional left pad bomb. Even dealing with GitHub is becoming irritating. How many web frameworks are there today? You can't answer. As the count just changed. <laughs> I just, I love that ending sentence. You know, I think overall, this is a really great perspective. I don't want to dunk on the guy too much. I think that he made a lot of really good points in the sense that the ever rushing change of progression isn't always good. And maybe a bit of slowdown is actually the better option. Maybe, just maybe, we could have had more innovation by having less innovation. Well, boomer, I mean, the thing is, is being a boomer is not bad. This idea that boomer's bad, zoomer good is, e that's like as much of a boomer take as it gets. Hi, mom. I love you. My wife told me to yell at the phone and say hi. That was my mom on the phone as my wife handed me this nice little smoothie. Boomer and zoomers both aren't great. You shouldn't want the latest, but you also shouldn't avoid the latest. Does that make sense? I'm not even saying signals are that great. Signals are good, but signals are also a potentially invented problem. You create this entirely crazy problem and then signals solves the entirely crazy problem. I'm not sure if that's like a W. All right, someone just got banned. What do what we get banned for? Boomers and Zoomers both suck on average. Gen X for the win. Get the hell out of here, Gen Xer. Everybody knows Gen Xers aren't supposed to actually say anything, okay? They're supposed to just sit there and they're supposed to not actually, they, they're they not seen, okay? Gen Xers are like Latin. It's an unspoken language. It's an unseen generation, okay? So what are you doing coming out here talking like that? That's offensive. So yeah, get, get this. this, there's this guy out there, right? Yeah, yeah. And he had his like little drum kit with him and he had his like little Nirvana t-shirt on and he was just like, uh, Gen Xers. And I was just like, get the hell out of the startup. We have an anti-discrimination music policy. Karen, I refuse any policy that makes me compliment Nickelback, okay? Get him back in, Flip. Get him back in. Hey, the name is the Exigen.